Welcome, welcome, welcome back, my magical book club. <laughs> I am so grateful for you all. Chapter three was amazing. It really touched my heart to see everyone participate in the heartfelt takeaways. And what even even more almost made me a crybaby <laughs> is to see you guys actually interacting with each other. And not only just, you know, writing your takeaway, typing it out and letting it be that, but you actually took the time. Some of you actually took the time to read others' takeaway and found encouragement and even offer advice. That's amazing. That is something that I encourage you guys to do. You never know through the connections of taking this journey, what powerful friend that you might love, attractive, manifesting friend <laughs> that you might connect with and be a result of manifestation. Just trying to, you know, it's so many people that say, I'm trying to find like-minded people. I want to find positive people, people to encourage me, you know, and this is how you do it exactly like this. So this is something that I do every season and it's just an honor. And I'm like I said, I am tremendously grateful to have you all with me on this journey of manifestation, on this journey of elevating and accessing our higher selves so that we can obtain anything in this world that we want. Because that's what the secret is about. <laughs> Knowing you have the power within you to call down anything that you need in your life. So I'm so grateful. I'm excited. And before we jump into chapter four, for those who are joining us, welcome. Um, feel free to just listen in. You don't have to sign up or, you know, do anything extra to join the Magical Book Club. How I will know that you are a part of the club is that you are participating in the many assignments that I post after every chapter. You can look at my pinned comment at the top and kind of fall, follow suit um, from that. And just that, you don't need any extra material or anything like that. If you have a book, please be encouraged to read along with me. But if you don't, it's okay. You can just listen to me read to you. <laughs> and it is my pleasure to do that. And I'm so grateful to be able to share the secret um, and law of attraction for those who um, have never heard of it before. So without further ado, we're going to jump into chapter four. Again, this is The Secret by Rhonda Barnes. Chapter 4, Powerful Processes. Dr. Joe Batal. A lot of people feel stuck or imprisoned or confined by their current circumstances. Whatever your circumstances right now, this is only your current reality. And current reality will begin to change as a result of using the secret. Your current reality or your current life is a result of the thoughts you have been thinking. All of that will totally change as you begin to change your thoughts and your feelings. That a man can change himself and master his own destiny is the conclusion of every mind who is wide awake to the power of right thought. Christian D. Larson. Lisa Nichols. When you want to change your circumstances, you must first change your thinking. Every time you look inside your mail expecting to see a bill, guess what? It'll be there. Each day you go out dreading the bill. You're never expecting anything great. You're thinking debt. You're expecting debt. So debt must show up so you won't think you're crazy. And every day you confirm your thought. Is debt going to be there? Yes, debt's there. Is debt going to be there? Yes, debt's there. Is debt going to be there? Yes, debt's there. Why? Because you expected debt to be there. So it showed up. Because the law of attraction is always being obedient to our thoughts. Do yourself a favor. Expect a check. Expectation is a powerful attraction force because it draws things to you. As Bob Proctor says, desire connects you, the thing desired, and expectation draws it into your life. Expect the things you want. And don't expect the things you don't want. What do you expect now? James Ray. Most people look at their current state of affairs and they say, this is who I am. That's not who you are. That's who you were. Let's say, for instance, that you don't have enough money in your bank account. Or you don't have the relationship that you want. Or your health and fitness aren't up to par. That's not who you are. That's the residual outcome of your past thoughts and actions. 
So we're constantly living in this residual, if you will, of the thoughts and actions we've taken in the past. When you look at your current state of affairs and define yourself by that, then you doom yourself to have nothing more than the same in the future. All that we are is a result of what we have thought, Buddha. I would like to share a process with you that came from the great teacher, Nabel Gooder, in a lecture he delivered in 1954, entitled, The Pruning Shears of Revision. This process has had a profound effect on my life. Nabel recommends at the end of every day, before you go to sleep, to think through the events of the day. If any events or moments did not go the way you wanted, replay them in your mind in a way that thrills you. As you are recreating those events in your mind exactly as you want, you are cleaning up your frequency from the day and you are emitting a new sig signal and frequency for tomorrow. You have intentionally created new pictures of your future and it is never too late to change the pictures. The Powerful Process of Gratitude, Dr. Joe Vitale. What can you do right now to begin to turn your life around? The very first thing is to start making a list of things to be grateful for. This shifts your energy and starts to shift your thinking. Whereas before this exercise, you might be focusing on what you don't have, your complaints, your problems. You go in a different direction when you do this exercise. You start to be grateful for all the things that you feel good about. If it is a new thought to have, to you that gratitude brings your whole mind into closer harmony. With the creative energies of the universe, consider it well, and you will see that it is true. Wallace Walters. Marcy Shamoff. Gratitude is absolutely the way to bring more into your life. Dr. John Gray, psychologist, author, and international speaker. Every man knows that when his wife is appreciating him for the little things he does, what does he want to do? He wants to do more. It's always about appreciation. It pulls things in. It attracts support. Dr. John De Martini. Whatever we think about and think about, we bring about. James Ray. Gratitude has been such a powerful exercise for me. Every morning I get up and I say, thank you. Every morning when my feet hit the floor, thank you. And then I start running through what I am grateful for as I am brushing my teeth and doing the things that I do in the morning. And I'm not just doing, thinking about them and doing some route routine. I'm putting it out there. I'm feeling the feelings of gratitude. The day we filmed James Ray sharing his powerful exercise of gratitude is one I will never forget. From that day on, I made James process my life. Every morning, I do not get out of bed until I have felt the feelings of gratitude for this brand new day and all I am grateful for in my life. Then as I get out of bed, one foot touches the ground, I say, thank, and you, as my second foot touches the ground. With each step I take on my way to the bathroom, I say, thank you. I continue to say and feel thank you as I am showering and getting ready. By the time I am ready for the day, I have said thank you a hundreds of times. As I do this, I am powerfully creating my day and all that it will contain. I am setting my frequency for the day intentionally declaring the way I want my day to go rather than stumbling out of my bed and letting the day take control of me. There is no more powerful way to begin your day than this. You are the creator of your life and so begin by intentionally creating your day. Gratitude was a fundamental part of the teachings of all the great avatars throughout history. In the book that changed my life, The Science of Getting Rich, written by Wallace Wattles in 1910, gratitude is its longest chapter. Every teacher featured in The Secret uses gratitude as a part of his or her day. Most of them begin their day with thoughts and feelings of gratitude. Joe Sugarman. A wonderful man and a successful entrepreneur watched the film The Secret and contacted me. He told me his favorite part was the gratitude process and that he used his use of gratitude had contributed to all he had achieved in his life. With all the success Joe has attracted to himself, he continues to use gratitude every day, even for the smallest things. When he gets a parking space, he always says and feels, thank you. 
Joe knows the power of gratitude, all it has brought to him, and so gratitude is his way of life. With all that I have read and with all that I have experienced in my own life using the secret, the power of gratitude stands above everything else. If you only do one thing with the knowledge of the secret, use gratitude until it becomes your way of life. Dr. Joe Patel. As soon as you start to feel different about what you already have, you will start to attract more of the good things, more of the things you can be grateful for. You can look around and say, well, I don't have the car I want. I don't have the house I want. I don't have the spouse I want. I don't have the health I want. Whoa, back up, back up. Those are all the things you don't want. Focus on what you already have that you're grateful for. And it might be the that you have the eyes to read this. It might be the clothes that you have. Yes, you might prefer something else. And you might get something else pretty soon if you start feeling gratitude and grateful for what you have now. Many people who order their lives rightly and all other things and always are kept in poverty by their lack of gratitude. Wallace Wattles. It is impossible to bring more into your life if you are feeling ungrateful about what you have. Why? Because the thoughts and feelings you emit as you feel ungrateful are all negative emotions. Whether it's jealousy, resentment, dissatisfaction, or feelings of not enough, those feelings cannot bring you what you want. They can only return to you more of what you do not want. Those negative emotions are blocking your own good coming to you. If you want a new car, but you are not grateful for the car you have, that will be a dominant frequency you are sending out. Be grateful for what you have now. As you begin to think about all the things in your life you are grateful for, you will be amazed at the never-ending thoughts that come back to you of more things to be grateful for. You have to make a start, and then the law of attraction will receive those grateful thoughts and give you more just like them. You will have locked into the frequency of gratitude and all things will be yours. The daily practice of gratitude is one of the conduits by which your health will come to you. Lee Brower, wealth trainer and specialist, author and teacher. I think everybody goes through times when they say things aren't working right or things are going bad. Once when there were some things going on in my family, I found a rock and I just sat holding it. I took this rock, I stuck it in my pocket and I said, every time I touch this rock, I'm going to think of something that I am grateful for. So every morning when I got up in the morning, I picked it up off the dresser, I put it in my pocket and I go through the things that I am grateful for. At night, what do I do? I empty my pocket and there it is again. I've had some amazing experiences with this idea. A guy from South Africa saw me drop it. He asked, what is that? I explained it to him and he started calling it a gratitude rock. Two weeks later, I got an email from him in South Africa and he said, my son is dying from a rare disease. It's a type of hepatitis. Would you send me three gratitude rocks? They were just ordinary rocks I found off the street. So I said, sure. I had to make sure that the rocks were very special. So I went to the stream, picked out the right rocks and sent them off to him. Four or five months later, I got an email from him and he said, my son's better, he's doing terrific. And he said, but you need to know something. We've sold a thousand rocks at $10 a piece as a gratitude, as gratitude rocks. And we raised over all the money for the charity Thank you very much. So it's very important to have an attitude of gratitude. The great scientist Albert Einstein revolutionized the way we see time, space, and gravity. From his poor background and poor beginnings, you would have thought that it was impossible for him to achieve all that he did. Einstein knew a great deal of the secret, and he said thank you hundreds of times a day. He thanked the great scientists who had preceded him for their contributions, which had enabled him to learn and achieve even more in his work. And he eventually became one of the greatest scientists who has ever lived. One of the most powerful uses of gratitude can be incorporated in the creative process to turbocharge what you want. 
As Bob Proctor advised in the first step of the creative process, ask. Start by writing down what you want. Begin each sentence with, I am so happy and grateful now that I, and you fill in the rest. When you give thanks as though you have already received what you want, you are emitting a powerful signal to the universe. That signal is saying that you have it already because you are feeling gratitude for it now. Each morning before you get out of bed, make it a habit to feel the feelings of gratitude in advance for the great day ahead as though it is done. From the moment I discovered the secret and formulated the vision to share this knowledge with the world, I gave thanks every day for the film, The Secret, which would bring joy to the world. I had no idea how we would bring this knowledge to the screen, but trusted that it would attract the way. I stayed focused and held to the outcome. I felt deep feelings of gratitude in advance. As that became my state of being, the floodgates opened and all the magic flowed into our lives. For the magnificent team of The Secret and for me, our deep heartfelt feelings of gratitude continue to this day. We have become a team that resonates gratitude with every moment and it has become our way of life. The Powerful Process of Visualization Visualization is a process that has been taught by all the great teachers and avatars through the centuries, as well as by all the great teachers living today. In Charles Handel's book, The Master Key System, written in 1912, he gives 24 weekly exercises to master visualization. More important, his complete master key system will also help you become the master of your thoughts. The reason visualization is so powerful is because as you create pictures in your mind of seeing yourself with what it is you want, you are generating thoughts and feelings of having it now. Visualization is a simple, powerfully focused thought in pictures, and it causes equally powerful feelings. When you are visualizing, you are emitting the powerful frequency out into the universe. The law of attraction will take hold of the powerful signal and return those pictures back to you, just as you saw them in your mind. Dr. Dennis Waitley. I took the visualization process from the Apollo program and instituted it during the 1980s and the 90s into the Olympic program. It was called visual motor rehearsal. When you visualize, then you materialize. Here's an interesting thing about the mind. We took the Olympic athletes and had them run their event only in their mind and then hooked them up to a sophisticated biofeedback equipment. Incredibly, the same muscles fire in the same sequence when they were running the race in their mind as when they were running it on the track. How could this be? Because the mind can't distinguish whether you are really doing it or whether it's just a practice. If you've been there in the mind, you'll go there in the body. Think about the inventors and their inventions. The Wright brothers in the plane, George Eastman in the film, Thomas Edison in the light bulb, Alexander Graham Bell in the telephone. The only way anything has ever been invented or created is because one person saw a picture in his mind. He saw it clearly. And by holding that picture of the end result in his mind, all the forces of the universe brought his invention into the world through him. These men knew the secret. These were men who had utter faith in the invisible and who knew the power within them to leverage the universe and bring the invention into the visible. Their faith and their imagination have been the cause of the evolution of humankind and we reap the benefits of their creative minds every single day. You may be thinking, I do not have a mind like these great inventors. You may be thinking they could only imagine those things, but I can't. You couldn't be any further from the truth. And as you continue on this great discovery of the knowledge of the secret, you will learn that you not only have the mind they had, but much more. Mike Dooley, when you're visualizing, when you've got that picture playing out in your mind, always and only dwell upon the end result. Here's an example. Look at the back of your hands right now. Really look at the back of your hands, the color of your skin, the freckles, the blood vessels, the rings, the fingernails. Take in all those details right before you close your eyes. See those hands, your fingers wrapping around the steering wheel of your brand new car. 
Dr. Joe Batal. This is a holographic experience, so real in this moment that you don't even feel as if you need the car because it feels like you have it already. Dr. Fatal's words brilliantly sum up the place you want to get yourself to when visualizing. When it feels like a jolt as you open your eyes in the physical world, your visualization became real. But the state, the plane, is the real. It is the field where everything is created. And the physical is just the result of the real field of all creation. That's why you won't feel as if you need it anymore. Because you tuned in and you felt the real feel of the creation through visualization. In that field, you have everything now. When you, when you feel that, you will know it. Jack Canfield. It's the feeling that really creates the attraction, not just the picture of the thought. A lot of people think, if I think positive thoughts or if I visualize having what I want, that will be enough. But if you're doing that and still not feeling abundant or feeling loving or joyful, then it doesn't create the power of the attraction. Bob Doyle. You put yourself in the feeling place of really being in that car. Not, I wish I could get that car or someday I'll have that car because that's a very definite feeling associated with that. It's not in the now, it's in the future. If you stay in that feeling, it will always be in the future. Michael Bernard Beckwith. Now that feeling and that inner scene will begin to be an open doorway through which the power of the universe will begin to express. What this power is, I cannot say. All I know is that it exists. Jack Canfield. Our job is not to figure out the how. The how will show up out of a commitment and belief in that what. Mike Dooley. The hows are the domain of the universe. It always knows the shortest, quickest, fastest, most harmonious way between you and your dream. Dr. Joe Vitale. If you turn it over to the universe, you will be surprised and dazzled by what is delivered to you. This is where magic and miracles happen. The teachers of the secret are all aware of the elements you bring into play when you visualize. As you see the picture in your mind and feel it, you are bringing yourself to a place of believing you have it now. You are also implementing trust and faith in the universe because you are focusing on the end result and experience the feeling of that. Without giving any attention whatsoever to how it will come about. Your picture in your mind is seeing it as done. Your feelings is seeing it as done. Your mind and your entire state of being are seeing it as already happened. That is the art of visualization. Dr. Joe Vitale. You want to do this virtually, daily, but it should never be a chore. What's really important to the whole secret is feeling good. You want to feel exhilarated by this whole process. You want to be high, happy, in tune as much as possible. Everyone has the power to visualize. Let me prove it to you with a picture of a kitchen. For this work, for this to work, first of all, you have to get all thoughts of your kitchen out of your mind. Do not think of your kitchen. Totally clear your mind of pictures of your kitchen with its cupboards, refrigerators, oven towels, and color scheme. You saw a picture of your kitchen in your mind, didn't you? Well, then you just visualized. Everyone visualizes whether he knows it or not. Visualization is a great secret of success. Here's a tip about visualizing. When Dr. John Martini shares in his Breakthrough Experience seminars, John said that if you create a static picture in your mind, it can be difficult to hold that picture. So create lots of movement in your picture. To illustrate this, imagine your kitchen again. And this time, imagine yourself entering that kitchen, walking to that refrigerator and putting your hand on the door handle, opening the door, looking inside and finding a cold bottle of water. Reach in and grab it. You can feel the coldness in your hand as you grasp the bottle. You have the bottle of water in one hand and you use your other hand to close the refrigerator door. Now that you are visualizing your kitchen with detail and movement, it's easier to see and hold the picture, isn't it? We all possess more power and greater possibilities than we realize. And visualizing is one of the greatest of these powers. Genevieve Brahand. 
The Powerful Process in Action, Marcy Shamal. The only difference between people who live in this way, who live in the magic of life, and those who don't, is that the people who live in the magic of life have habituated ways of being. They have made a habit of using the law of attraction and magic happens with them wherever they go because they remember to use it. They use it all the time, not just as a one-time event. Here are two true stories that clearly demonstrate the powerful law of attraction and the immaculate matrix of the universe in action. The first story is about a woman named Jeannie who bought a DVD of The Secret and was watching it at least once a day so that she could absorb the messages right into the cells of her body. She was particularly impressed with Bob Proctor and she thought it would be wonderful to meet him. One morning, Jeannie collected her mail and to her utterly amazement, the mailman had accidentally delivered Bob Proctor's mail to her address. What Jeannie didn't know is that Bob Proctor lived just four blocks away from her. Not only that, but Jeannie's house number was the same number as Bob's. She immediately took the mail to deliver it to the correct address. Can you imagine her utter delight when the door opened and Bob Proctor was standing before her? Bob is rarely at home as he travels all over the world teaching about the matrix of the universe. Knows only perfect timing. From Jeannie's thoughts of how wonderful it would be to meet Bob Proctor, the law of attraction moved people, circumstances, and events throughout the universe so that it could happen. The second story involves a 10-year-old boy named Colin who had seen and loved the secret. Colin's family made a week-long visit to Disney World and on their first day they experienced long lines at the park. So that night, just before Colin fell asleep, he thought, Tomorrow, I'd love to go on all the big rides and never have to wait in line. The next morning, Colin and his family were at the gates of the Epoch Center as the park opened. And a Disney staff member approached and asked them if they would be Epoch's first family of the day. As the first family, they would be given VIP status, a special escort by a staff member, and walk-on passes for every big ride in Epoch. It was everything and more that Colin had wished for. Hundreds of families were waiting to enter the apocalypse that morning. But Colin didn't have the slightest doubt as to why his family had been chosen first family. He knew it was because he had used the secret. Imagine discovering at the age of 10 that the power to move worlds lie within you. Nothing can prevent your picture from coming into concrete form except the power which gave it birth, yourself. Genevieve Brahand. James Ray. People hold that for a while, and they're really a champion at it. They say, I'm fired up. I saw this program, and I'm, and I'm going to change my life. And yet, results aren't showing. Beneath the surface, it's just about ready to break through. But the person will look just at the surface result and say, this stuff doesn't work. And you know what? The universe says, your wish is my command, and it disappears. When you allow a thought of doubt to enter your mind, the law of attraction will soon line up one doubtful thought after another. The moment a thought of doubt comes, release it immediately. Send that thought on its way. Replace it with, I know I am receiving it now, and I feel it. John Astaroff. Knowing the law of attraction, I wanted to really put it into use and to, you, to see what would happen. In 1995, I created something called a vision board where I take something that I want to achieve or something that I want to attract like a car, a watch, or the soulmate of my dreams and I put a picture of what I want on this board. Every day, I would sit in my office and I would look up at the vision board and I would start to visualize. I would really get into that state of having already acquired it. I was getting ready to move. We put all the furniture, all the boxes into storage and I made three different moves over a period of five years. And then I ended up in California and bought this house, renovated it for a year, then had all the stuff brought from my former home five years earlier. One morning, my son Keenan came into my office and one of the boxes that was sealed for five years is right at the doorstep. He's asked, what's in the boxes, daddy? 
I said, those are my vision board. He then asked, what's a vision board? I said, well, it's where I put all my goals up. I cut them out and I put them all up as something that I would want to achieve in my life. Of course, at five and a half years old, he didn't understand. And so I said, sweetheart, let me just show you that it'll be the easiest way to do it. I cut the box open and on one vision board was a picture of a home that I was visualizing five years earlier. What was shocking was that we were living in that house, not a house like it. I actually bought the house of my dreams. We, we innovated it and didn't even know it. I looked at the house and I started to cry because I was just blown away. Kenan asked, why are you crying? I finally understood how the law of attraction works. I finally understood the power of visualization. I finally understood everything that I've read, everything that I've worked with my whole life, the way I built companies. It worked for my home as well. And I bought our dream home and didn't even know it. Imagination is everything. It is a preview of life's coming attractions. Albert Einstein. You can let your imagination go wild with a vision board and place pictures of all the things you want and the pictures of how you want your life to be. Make sure you put the vision board in a place where you see it and look at it every day. As John Astaroff did, feel the feelings of having those things now. As you receive and feel gratitude for receiving, you can remove pictures and add new ones. This is a wonderful way to introduce children to the law of attraction. I hope the creation of a vision board inspires parents and teachers worldwide. One of the people on the secret website forum put a picture of the secret DVD on his vision board. He had seen the secret but didn't own his own copy. Two days after he created his vision board, I felt inspired to post a notice on the secret forum giving away DVDs to the first 10 people who posted. He was one of the 10. He received a copy of the secret DVD within two days of putting it on his vision board. Whether it was a DVD of The Secret or a house, the joy of creating and receiving is magnificent. Another powerful example of visualizing comes from my mother's experience of buying a new house. Several people besides my mother have put in offers to this particular house. My mother decided to use The Secret to make that house hers. She sat down and wrote her name and the new address of the house over and over. She continued doing this until it felt as though it was her house and her address. She then imagined placing all of her furniture in that new house. Within hours of doing these things, she received a phone call saying her offer had been accepted. She was so thrilled, but it didn't come as a surprise to her because she knew that the house was hers. What a champion. Jack Canfield. Decide what you want. Believe you can have it. Believe you deserve it. Believe it's possible for you. And then close your eyes every day for several minutes. Visualize having what you already want. Feeling the feelings of already having it. Come out of that and focus on what you're grateful for already and really enjoy it. Then go into your day and release it to the universe and trust that the universe will figure it out and how to manifest it. Secret Summaries Expectation is a powerful, attractive force. Expect the things you want and don't expect the things you don't want. Gratitude is a powerful process for shifting your energy and bringing more of what you want into your life. Be grateful for what you already have and you will attract more good things. Giving thanks for what you want in advance turbocharges your desires and sends a powerful message and signal out into the universe. Visualization is the process of creating pictures in your mind of yourself enjoying what you want. When you visualize, you generate powerful thoughts and feelings of having it now. The law of attraction then returns that reality to you, just as you saw it in your mind. To use the law of attraction to your advantage, make it habitual, a habitual way of being, not just a one-time event. At the end of every day, before you go to sleep, Go back through the events in any moment or time that you were not what you wanted. Replay them in your mind the way you wanted them to go. Mm. Well, club, magical club, that concludes chapter four. <laughs> now, I don't know about y'all, but I am feeling so empowered 
after reading all that. And this is why it's an important. As many times as I've, I have read Rhonda Barnes' book, every time it unlocks a different level of frequency within me. It is a constant reminder. Law of attraction is not a one-time event as stated. Law of attraction is something that you are going to have to practice and exercise every day of your life because there's not going to be one day that you do not have a thought. <laughs> and whether that thought is good or bad, you still have control of your reality and your outcome. And if you want that very thought to materialize and manifest into your life. One day, I'm going to show you guys a picture of my vision board that I made two years ago. I can say about two, a year and a half ago from now. And when I look at I still have it up to this day. And I am amazed, even the littlest things. I've made several vision boards, and they're all over my room, <laughs> to be honest with you. But as I reflect and look back, a vision board is a very powerful tool. It is a reminder. It is a constant reminder. It's for you to stay focused. And one tip that I have when it comes to visualization, when people tell me, oh, I can't imagine that. It's hard for me to see that. I respond and I tell them, but I bet you have no problem. <laughs> visualization, the worst case scenario, don't you? It's always easy for us to visualize the worst. Why not the best? What do you have to lose? Hmm. So guys, I really am just so honored, so grateful to have all of you with me on this adventure to the law of attraction, the secret. I am so grateful for Rhonda Barn Proctor, Lisa Nichols, John, Jack Canfield, all those who have contributed to this wonderful piece. It's amazing. And look how it has brought all of us together. So I am, I'm, <laughs> listen, I am honored and I am so excited to read your heartfelt takeaways please be encouraged remember what Rhonda Barnes said as far as her team that came together to create the film The Secret to this day they are still a powerful manifesting team and that is why I push you guys to interact with each other it just builds the momentum for the law of attraction even more and make it more potent and make it more powerful even after we're done with this trilogy you will never forget this set of people that took this adventure with you and I'll bet some of you make lifetime connections off of it if that's what you want so till next time my magical book powerful manifestation visualization warriors of a book club I love you all so much see you Sunday for chapter five don't forget your heartfelt takeaways